Hi everybody, John Bailey, gemstone artist and founder of the Faceting Academy. Welcome back to my studio and to another how-to video on sequencing and this time cam architecture. Today we're going to work with a Portuguese style oval and that's a type of a design that might seem really intimidating at first but this one is an easy intermediate level diagram that's really fast and simple to cut. I created this design for a friend of mine a week or so ago for a project that he had going in Oregon Fire Oval. And let's take a look at what he produced. The goal in this design was to produce a Portuguese style diagram that was quick and easy to cut. We also wanted to avoid the design error of putting too many facets on the pavilion, thereby aggravating the natural sleepiness due to the colloidal inclusions typical of this Oregon Fire Oval. Now my solution was to stretch my 12-sided mini Portuguese into the 1.4 proportions that Robert needed and then to clean up some of the issues that that stretching caused. After that to optimize for the refractive index and then to make sure it could be cut quickly and easily using just a cam strategy. This is what it looks like rendered in higher RI materials. The result called Robert's Rush is a decent performer in both versions, one for the lower RI materials like opal and one that looks like this for topaz and anything above. Now, due to the built-in cam and the reduced number of facets even on the girdle, it's also a very fast and easy diagram to cut, especially as Portuguese ovals go. So intermediate faceters should find this design surprisingly easy. Here's how it comes together. As with any cam design, we're going to begin by cutting multiple facets to a single central point using the same angle and mast height. These multiple facets form a point that shows us the exact center axis of the gem. In this case, we're going to use four facets, which is pretty typical for any two-fold mirror image symmetry design. We begin by cutting on indexes 19, 29, 67, and 77 to create this temporary culet point. You might notice that the cam part of this design is quite deep and we're going to cut a lot of this rough away. So you're going to want to have pretty deep rough to work with. The second set of guide facets is on an index of nine. They meet that same central culet point. And the third set of guide facets is on an index of three. Nice thing about this design is we use only one, two, three sets of guide facets. So only three angles and three different mast heights cutting to the central point with only 12 total facets to create the basis of our cam design. Once we've done this, we're ready to put in the girdles. You might notice that my oval designs sequence the girdles from the ends and working towards the middle. As a general rule, and for a number of reasons, we want to sequence non-round designs this way whenever we can, from the ends working into the middle. We're going to build the girdles from the end of the oval in towards the middle. We begin by placing girdle facets on the same indexes as the first guide facet. That's an index of 19, 29, 67, and 77. This is the point where we're going to calibrate the stone. If you want an exact size, drop your calipers across these two points, grind the girdle facets in until you have the length that you want, and then cut the rest of the stone just accordingly, and you'll have a calibrated design. The second girdle facet is going to meet the junctions of guide facet 1 and guide facet 2 with girdle facet 1. Here, here it is in the side view, and here it is in the other view. These four facets drop in this way, and you can see the girdle line beginning to go straight across. Very easily on guide facet number 3, which is also an index of 3, we're going to drop a new girdle facet right across there and we see the girdle making a nice straight line. Once we put in just three sets of girdle facets, we've got our exact girdle plan and we're ready to populate the rest of the pavilion. We populate the pavilion by working again from the end towards the middle of the design. Our first facet, number four, for populating above this row, is going to meet the girdle at index of 24, splitting those guide facets number one, just like this. Facet number five meets the girdle between facets one and two. Four of those come in like this. Facet number six meets the girdle between two and three, just like that. 
and facet number seven splits number three, meeting the girdle at the top and bottom. Once you get to this point, you might notice that this row of facets does not form a nice new culet point. We've cut away the original temporary, and now we have this thing that doesn't look very good. Don't freak out. This is supposed to look this way. Yours will look this way if it's right. Do not tweak these and try to make a meet, or your final row won't be right. So leave these alone. Just let them be at way, the way they are. Meet properly at the girdle. Let these fall where they do, and the final row will fix everything. The final row of facets is on the same indexes as guide facets 1, 2, and 3, same as the girdles. So it's easy to remember. Index 19, 9, and 3. Facet number 8 is going to meet facet number 1, right here at 4 and 5, just like that. And once you drop in facet number 8, that establishes your permanent culet point here. The next facets will also meet these break facets and the culet point. Facet number 9 is meeting facet 2. It's cut on an index of 9, meeting 2, 5, and 6 right here. And you might notice it's meeting the permanent culet point. Facet 10 is meeting 3, between 6 and 7, right here. And it's also meeting the permanent culet point. Now we've completed the entire pavilion. One of the things to remember about pavilions is that we typically build them from the girdle to the culet. That means cutting from the girdle to the culet and typically polishing from the culet back down to the girdle. This is not a hard and fast rule. It's just a rule of thumb, but it's a good one to follow. Now we're ready to transfer the stone and cut in the crown. We're going to cut in the crown from the end to the middle the same way we cut the girdle facets. When we cut in the first row of crown facets on number A, that first set of facets establishes the width or thickness of the girdle. We're going to carry that line straight across. So pay attention to how wide you're making the girdle. That's how wide it's going to be all the way. Facet number B just comes in on the very next girdle index, which is 9, and we're going to chain a nice straight girdle line across. Facet C, the same thing. Just carry the girdle across. That's all we're doing, evening them up at the correct angles. Our next row of facets on the crown begins again at the end. It's going to meet the girdle and split those A's. The same kind of pattern we did when we were cutting the pavilion. Facet D drops in here. Facet E, once again, meets the girdle here between A and B. Facet F meets the girdle here between B and C. And facet G is going to split the C's right here at the bottom and the top. Now we're on the third row of facets on the crown, and we want to pay attention to one tricky little deal. From the guide facet here to the culet facet here, the girdle facet here, and facet A, these are all on an index of 19. It was easy to remember all the way through. But the facet we're about to create, facet H, that meets A, D, and E at this point, facet H is shifted by one index tooth. It's on an index of 20. So pay attention to that little shift, and don't misindex this thing. Also, when you cut facet number H, notice that they're kind of skinny, thin little guys, and they'll drop in super fast and overcut really easy. So light touch and be careful with these guys. The next facet, uh, facet number J, it has the same one index tooth shift. Facet B is on an index of 9. Facet J is on an index of 10. Be careful, no errors this late in a Portuguese design. So we put in all four of the facet J's. There we are. Facet K now is going to meet facet C, F, and G right here. And facet K is back to matching the same index as C. So facet K is on an index of 3. Great. Now we put in all the facets on the crown except for the table. We drop in the table. Make sure when you put it in that all of your meats line up. And notice that just like the pavilion, when we cut a crown, we normally cut or build the crown from the girdle level up to the table and then polish from the table back down to the girdle. Once again, that's not a hard and fast rule, but it's a really strong tip and I recommend that you try it. Polish everything to nice meats and enjoy your fast, easy, 
Robert's Rush Portuguese Oval. Whether you cut it in opal or higher RI material, I hope you have fun with it. Please leave your comments down below, and if you send photos of your work in this design, maybe we'll feature them on this page. If you have questions or a design request, please just ask. You never know when your request will be the basis for the new design. Maybe one with your name on it, and maybe a new video too. Thanks, and see you next time. If not at Tucson, maybe at one of our live training events. It's a little freaky, isn't it? This one is an easy intermediate level uh, 